All right, people. I guess I just kind of wanted to talk about something that was uh, I discovered recently, and uh, I don't know. I just wanted to talk about it because I think it's kind of interesting, and it says a lot about what's kind of going on in the state of gaming at the moment. And uh, yes, I'm playing this on a PS3. That's kind of why the quality is a little bit garbage because I'm streaming through like a composite capture card. So it's not going to be very high quality. It's really all I have access to at the moment, but um, you know, it's all right. We'll make it work. But um, so pretty much. If anybody knows anything about the Alice games, um, American McGee was working on the sequel to Madness Returns called Alice Asylum. And a couple months ago, it was announced that EA, EA, EA um, denied their pitch to do the sequel. Um, they said that it did not fit their current market which i thought was really strange considering all of the different single player uh story based games that have been coming out recently um especially all these recent souls likes and whatnot you know like star wars kind of becoming a souls like game um you know that's definitely very different than what they've been doing for a long time um, I just think it's really strange and I think it's kind of a shame that they would shoot the pitch for this down um, I mean you know if you look at what EA is really selling right now it's pretty much all sports games and um, you know random online multiplayer experiences like battle royales and stuff things that they can really monetize a lot because i guess you know that's where the money is people when people open up their pockets it's better for them in the long run which is just unfortunate um it doesn't really benefit anybody other than them you know that's a pity kind of just ends up turning people into <laughs> money it's like a, it's like a money laundering kind of thing not really but um, you know just just it ends up kind of coercing people into spending a lot more money on things that um, don't even really matter anyway like cosmetics or DLC add-ons and things like that that really should have been in the game to begin with you know not that there's anything inherently wrong with DLCs and whatnot but um or cosmetics you know cosmetic items are cool and whatever I guess you know if that really floats your boat but in the end you know you're not you're not adding to your gameplay experience really at all you're just paying for costumes um, which is fine, you know, there's, like I said, there's nothing really wrong with that. It just, um, I don't know, it's just kind of a shallow part of the experience, if you ask me. Um, which is part of why I've even playing this game to begin with right now, you know. It's, um, it's a game that I remember seeing years ago, I remember seeing YouTubers play this game. And um, I just always thought that this looks like such an interesting game. It, the art style is really cool, and the surreal atmospheres are really interesting to me. And, you know, it's this weird kind of twisted take on Alice in Wonderland, which is, you know, it's really cool. You don't... It's, it's kind of like when you know how the real, like, grim fairy tales pe play out, it's kind of like... If Alice in Wonderland was one of Grimm's fairy tales for real instead of the, you know, the childlike version of them, which I guess are still kind of dark, but if Alice in Wonderland was actually dark, but anyways, I'm rambling about that. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm going totally off script right now. I just kind of wanted to talk about 
just that um, it's really it's really a shame that they decided to cancel this. I think it's I think it's kind of a, a bad move, you know. And it it was something that oh, you if you look up any news yeah. about the game, it was pretty much at the point where it was ready to be developed. It was ready for the game to be worked on. Um, all the artwork was laid out, pretty much all of the story was written, all of the gameplay ideas had basically, you know, had been completely, completely worked. And, you know, they pitched it to them, and for them to just kind of come back and be like, this doesn't really work for us, is just really disappointing. And I understand American McGee kind of wanting to sort of move on from it you know I don't I don't knock him for feeling like we should just kind of get over it and move on you know that might not stop him from creating experiences in the future although he has said that he's pretty much leaving the gaming industry which is also pretty disappointing but also understandable considering the the state of the industry at this point you know I'm not sure a lot of people would really want to be in it unless you're an indie developer and you have full control over the things that you're developing there's just not much room for your own creativity if you're kind of being funneled through a publisher you know um or not necessarily a, a publisher because you know um publishers like new blood and stuff they do a lot of good stuff and they give their artists free reign on their creativity you know whether or not you enjoy the whole boomer shooter genre or whatnot um you know you still can't deny that they give their artists and their developers a lot of opportunities to really just be themselves and make the things that they want to make without really getting in the way too much and they provide them with resources and other developers to to help them make these games that you know they believe in and they think that will be great and a lot of times you know it pays off um games like ultra kill and stuff that have come out recently you know they were published by new blood and i guess it kind of fits into that modern market where modern first person shooters and really fast-paced action experiences but it also kind of um you know if you've played ultra kill it touches on some interesting religious notes and whatnot uh, um things that most games probably wouldn't touch with like a 10-foot pull you know because it is controversial to even sort of mention those things in your games at all um sorry kind of lost the train of thought there but i don't know i think that this is yeah, I don't know, I just can't really say a whole lot other than I feel like it's it's just a big mistake. And I think that it's really unfortunate that catering to a market that at the end of the day isn't even really that interested in having these more in-depth, you know, complex experiences. It, it's It really feels like... You know they want to make a game that they think that they can monetize and you know sell dlc for sell cosmetics for you know find a way to like get back into your pocket after the game's already been developed and i mean i'm sure you know there would be opportunities for that even if they did decide to make a new alice game or let american mcgee make his own alice game and you know maybe part of the reason that they denied it maybe you know maybe american mcgee didn't want to partake in those practices and that's part of why it got shot down i mean i don't i don't know that much and i'm sure there was a lot of legal stuff going on between him and ea and none of that's really been disclosed as far as i'm aware of um but you know, yeah, it just kind of ends up feeling like they just want to find ways to get into your pockets, and a game like this wouldn't give as many opportunities for 
things like that to occur. I mean, I guess, you know, you could... You could sell some costumes or something like that for Alice to wear, and I'm sure that uh, if they're going to cater to the current market, there would be a little bit of degeneracy sprinkled in there. And, you know, don't get me wrong, I appreciate a little bit of degeneracy every now and then as well. Um, but I think at the end of the day, you know, things like that would probably take away from the the actual vibe that they're going for and it's you know it's not necessary it's not it's not what needs to happen to get the point across of what they're trying to say and what the what the artist really wants to express in their game but um I don't know I don't know it's just sad because you know this is the first time I've really gotten to experience this game firsthand and uh i've really enjoyed it I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it i think it's a really it's a really fun game um there's a lot of really cool stuff going on here and i think you know the combat's really well balanced it feels good to play there's some weird you know lock-on stuff that goes on but just about any game that has lock-on combat has some issues with camera angles or uh, targeting being kind of inconsistent or difficult switching between targets. It's not really anything that's, you know, going to break your experience with it unless you just can't handle, like, small inconveniences while you're playing, which, <laughs> let's be real, that's kind of the current market. Um, you know, the current market doesn't want things that are gonna really provide any kind of inconvenience. I mean, competitive gaming can be inconvenient in its own way. Um, the whole esports fanaticism and, um, you know, stuff like Call of Duty being really prominent. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, people do pay for shortcuts and cheats and things like that so you know any any way to kind of get through it or get the good things quickly is a little bit more desirable and they can reach their way back into your pocket that way too so um and i don't know you know i don't want to dig on ea the whole time even though they do kind of deserve it but that's not really the point of the video the point of the video is that um you know alice asylum being cancelled is um, it's just so unfortunate because I think there was a lot of potential going there and that considering that they already had the entire game basically finished it kind of just begs the question like why and what about the current market would make this game so unappealing for EA um, and part of me wonders you know considering how long that this you know even the ideas and stuff have been brewing i'm sure that it would probably take them excuse me several years to even reach a point where the game would be releasable um you know i'm sure that there would be a lot of work that goes into it i mean alice madness returns didn't even come out till 10 or 11 years after the first game was made so you know, chances are they probably would have pitched the game to EA a couple months ago, a year ago, and, you know, maybe it would have been five or more years before we would have seen the actual release of the game, which realistically is, is fine. Um, there, That's kind of a big problem with the, the current market nowadays, too, is there's definitely a little bit too much of a focus on bringing things out as fast as possible. Um, and games nowadays, especially with the push for making everything so graphically intensive and massive open worlds with these, I don't want to say in-depth mechanics because a lot of games actually lack depth nowadays unless you're playing something like Elden Ring or an indie game. Um, and indie games, you know, may also take years, especially if there's not really a team behind them. But anyways, yeah, it just, um, I don't know, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. 
I just, I don't really understand their motive. And they could have easily, you know, if they had just kind of let the game brew naturally and become what it's supposed to be, that, you know, give it some time, let it, give it some time in the oven to be something really great. You know, it might not make them money right now or in the next six months or in the next year, but it would maybe bring them in more money later on, especially with how aggressively EA markets everything and, you know, things like that. Uh, they would have had no problem garnering a large player base, at least off the bat. You know, of course there are going to be people that are going to play it and you know this game isn't for me and that's fine you know you can't expect everybody to like these these kinds of games you know um, it's definitely kind of a cult following but still um, they wouldn't have had any issues gathering that initial base of people that just want to try the game and see what it's all about so I don't know it's just weird it's just weird. It's really unfortunate. It's unfortunate that it, um, you know, it ended up turning into something that ended up basically destroying the entire game itself, where he essentially was like, it doesn't even matter who decides they want to pick it up. It's just kind of done. And there's, at this point, it seems like there's not really any chance of the game being released at all. Which is crazy, considering that it was basically finished. You know, they're, like I said, all the artwork is, is done. The environments have been you know, at least drawn up. All the ideas are there. And, and now it's just never going to see the light of day. Because, I guess, you know, in my mind, it just sounds like EA just isn't... They think that they're not going to make any money off of it. So, yeah, and I know I've been uh, I've been kind of repeating myself a lot. Like I said, you know, I'm not I'm not scripted right now. I'm just I just wanted to talk about it because it kind of bothers me. And this whole this whole push to make games, you know, make them appeal to everybody so that you can get millions of players in your game and then inevitably market cosmetics and paid DLCs and stuff like that. I mean, it, there's there's a reason that EA's top games right now are sports games and, uh, you know, other games that copy the formula of other games, you know, like Jedi, the, what is it, the... I don't know, the Jedi series. I don't even know what it's called, because I just don't... I don't really care to play anything that they make anymore. Although I have... I did play Need for Speed Unbound, and it was fun. I enjoyed it for for what it was. I enjoyed it as a, as a racing game, I guess, but I think that really comes more from Criterion being a talented developer and having developed the Burnout Paradise, the Burnout series in general, so they pretty much already had an entire engine and all those those things built at their disposal. So it was built on a solid framework. Um, but, you know, the Jedi Order and whatnot, they just kind of... It's like taking the hype of Dark Souls and then playing off the popularity of Star Wars and merging it together, which isn't, you know, it's not a bad idea. Clearly it worked for them, uh, to some extent, regardless of how poorly the new game launched. It still ended up being a pretty good move for them. But, I don't know, just, it's just lame. It's just real lame. Real lame, and to kill off, to kill off something that's existed, you know, and something that they published already. They've already published two of these games, and they own the rights to Alice, which is also part of uh, part of why that's even more unfortunate, because technically, American McGee 
doesn't even own the rights to Alice. EA actually owns all the rights to Alice. Um, so, I mean, they could realistically sell this IP to a different publisher and have them make something and hopefully that would turn into would go into the hands of a publisher that would maybe try to play off the spirit of the original games but I mean how what better way to make a successor to something than for it to come from the original developer themselves it would just it would just never be the same so inevitably the series is probably just gonna die off and madness returns is all we're gonna ever have of the Alice games other than you know the first game but this will just be the last entry that we have and American McGee has talked about potentially still um, he had another project that he was working on called Oz which sounded pretty interesting you know I guess it would have been probably another like twisted version of the Wizard of Oz which I think that actually would have been I, I would like to see that I'd, especially because I think the Alice series is a really cool series I think uh, I think their play on Oz would probably be really cool and interesting as well um, there's there's a lot of creativity, you know. Clearly, even even right in this area, there's a lot of surreal themes going on, um, and you you know you just don't really see that kind of things anymore. Everything's kind of just grounded in reality, and it's as ultra realistic as it can be without really even being that realistic. It just kind of sort of looks realistic. Which kind of ends up hurting a lot of games at the end of the day, um, in my opinion. I think that there's something really special about a game that has its own art style and isn't just trying to copy the real world. And GTA and stuff, you know, they, they get away with it because, well, for one, they make genuinely good games. But there's a reason that those games look realistic, because they play on a parody of what real life is like. Um, obviously it's an extremely dramatized and exaggerated and extreme parody, but nonetheless it still is and it makes sense for those games to attempt to appear realistic graphically. Um, or even things like Skyrim, you know, which are supposed to be these recreations of a world that sort of resembles reality without being real well being being a fantasy of the real world um, I don't know you know if games like ultra kill or other boomer shooters, even like the postal boomer shooter, did really well. At least initially, you know, maybe not as much nowadays, but you know, even just taking Ultra Kill for example, it's literally based off of 90s era Quake shooters, you know. So if those games can still be popular, then there's clearly a market for it, but the market for that just is not nearly as big as the overall market that pretty much just wants to see games look like real life. So, I don't know kind of running out of things to talk about I guess I think a lot of what I needed to say has been said um, I wish that I wish that Alice Asylum would actually become a thing 
It's a shame that it's not. But I guess, you know, that's something that we'll all just kind of have to deal with. And regardless of how I feel, it's uh, just it is what it is, you know. Can't make EA do something, and obviously they're not going to, so there's there's no reason to, to try and push or things like that. Um, and Alice Madness Returns is such a such an old and obscure game now. I mean, I guess if you want to consider 10 years old an old game, but I guess relative to what people are playing nowadays, it is an old game. Um, but it's just, you know, it's, it's, it is a bit dated and obscure and not a lot of people are really, are really playing this game anymore. You know, I'm only I'm only playing it because I I saw it in a in a retro game store that I I go to pretty frequently and they had a copy of it and I was like, "Holy crap, I forgot that this game even existed." But I always wanted to play it and so, you know, I'm playing it and it, and it's great. I don't know. And we just won't I'm not going to see much of that anymore. I think we're just going to continue to see things that... I don't know. It seems like at this point, really, all we're seeing are games that try to push the boundaries of what graphics can be output more so than the depth of the mechanics that can be offered. I'm not saying that Alice is a is a super deep game. I, I think I'm, you know, I'm really just, excuse me, just kind of talking about it in general. Um, that there was, even during the PS3 era, while PS3 360 era, while it was also in some ways the the turning point, um, there was still a lot of innovation going on and a lot of series that came over from the PS1 and the PS2 that continued sort of where they left off and became even bigger than they ever were. Um, you know, I don't I don't know if we're really seeing much more of that anymore and I think part of the reason that <laughs> I think part of the reason that FromSoft and stuff is doing so well right now um, is because, well, for one, you know, they make good games. They make genuinely good games. Um, and they've kind of been... They've been evolving slowly over time. They're not totally breaking the ground with each release, but um, they just they do what they do well. And that's that's important. I think constantly iterating and fleshing out the ideas that you have there are good. It's a good practice, and that's why you know we have Elden Ring and Bloodborne and games like that. You know, which have been a refinement of what's come before them. And you know, and you can even you could even see say the same things about maybe some of the older Assassin's Creed games before the more recent milkings, which have been going on since the PS3 era. I mean, there's there's like eight Assassin's Creed games for the seventh generation alone. Um, But some of them, you know, some of them are better than others, which is inevitable if you're remixing the same formula. But 
I don't know. Getting way off topic here. This topic was supposed to be how Asylum was cancelled. And American McGee is exiting the gaming industry pretty much for for good as far as it as far as it seems right now. It's pretty much it's pretty much over for just about anything that we might see from him. Um, which is which is unfortunate. Not that I have a huge attachment to his works at all, but um, I think it just sucks seeing a developer that that does have a lot of passion for their ideas and and what they're doing to just be denied for honestly a kind of shallow reason. It doesn't. I'm surprised that didn't hurt me. I guess, you know, rest in peace, Alice. It's fun while it lasted, I suppose. And if you haven't played Menace Returns, then I suggest that you play it. I think it's a great game. I think it's it's not gonna be the best game you've ever played, but I think it's a it's a cool game. There's a lot that it has going on. Um, it has a lot going for it. The gameplay is fun, it's responsive, combat feels good, combat's fun. I mean, what else What else do you really want from a game other than enjoying it and just having fun with it? That's why we play games, don't we? So... Oh, okay. I didn't know that was gonna kill me. But yeah, it's just, it's all about having fun and innovating. But uh, I guess, you know, I guess it's better now to just milk and, and get what you can while people are still paying attention to whatever you're doing. Because for some reason that matters more than making a good game with interesting ideas and passion behind it and that's just that's just a big problem in general nowadays unfortunately and it's probably not going to go away anytime soon especially with how increasingly always online everything is kind of becoming it's just going to honestly probably be more of a problem it's never, at this point, it's probably something that's never really going to go away until people actually start boycotting and fighting back by not buying games that are clearly preying on people. Um, but, you know, the people that are being preyed on are kind of okay with being preyed on. Um, you know, it's... You know, you read a lot of comments, and in a lot of ways, it's it's really kind of what they want. You know, they want these these experiences um, that can just kind of be easily bought, or they they want the the cosmetics and stuff like that, because um, you know they they think that things like that are important. And uh, You know, people are never gonna. People are never gonna stop pre-ordering games, no matter how many times we get broken releases and bug-filled messes and Mass Effect Andromedas and things like that. You know, it's just it's it's gonna happen, and the the market that they're appealing to isn't really interested in boycotting because, you know, they're playing the games 
they're the ones that are pre-ordering and they're the ones that are buying all of the cosmetics and the people that don't care to have those things you know they're not the ones that are playing those games and they're not the ones that are giving EA money and EA wants people to give them money and it's not just EA you know this goes for other developers you know Ubisoft has been guilty of this and but still, you know, the, the point still stands. It's just not, it's not, it's not something that these, these major publishers are, are going to get rid of. And if anything, they're just going to fight back harder to make more appealing reveal trailers that hit that immediate dopamine spike and don't show off actual gameplay elements, but just give you a taste of of what you think the game should be but in the end it's really not and a lot of times that you know that really just has to do with games not having a lot of time to cook they don't let them cook so and yeah I mean uh, I said this earlier, with how, with how demanding and stuff games are now, um, games really do need longer than a year or two to really turn into something that can be interesting. So. I don't know. How long have I been talking? I'm not even tracking my time right now. I've just been playing the game and talking to you. Don't know. But yeah, for some reason, seeing this article and, and reading about the cancellation of the game just really kind of made me think about everything that's really been going on for a long time and how it kind of makes sense that EA doesn't want to publish something like this. Um, yeah, and it, it just, it feels real slimy and grimy and gross. And it's, it's you know, it's felt like real slimy and grimy and gross for a long time. They've never really recovered from that. It's, it's been like that for a long time. Um, but like I said, you know, the people that, the people that support them if we're being honest, are are not really the people that are that are looking into this kind of stuff. They're they're just kind of okay with the way that things are, or they come from a different time in gaming where um, it's kind of just always been like that. You know, there there are people that play games now that grew up on the PS3 and the Xbox 360 and stuff, and as I mentioned earlier, that was pretty much the start of when really things kind of started to take a turn and we started to see more monetization I mean that was that was the origin of the uh, the origin of the oblivion horse armor which kind of started a lot of it and start everything but it uh, it really took off and with Bethesda being a major publisher it you know obviously it uh rose some eyebrows but yeah you know there's a there's an era of of gamers now that pretty much only know what gaming has been like now and i think that that's 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 the real audience here you know that's that's the real appeal that's that's what ea wants to appeal to they in ways they to be real it's it's literally like they they want to appeal to people that don't know any better i mean i'm 
old enough to remember a time when those things did not exist and we literally know better we we came from a time where that that wasn't a thing you didn't you didn't buy a game that wasn't finished and and it sold and people played it and defended it or not that people didn't defend these the good games or the the bad games um but it just it just wasn't as it wasn't as defended it wasn't as protected you know when when people released a game it was expected to be good and if you didn't make a good game then it didn't sell and too bad so sad try again next time in a couple years when you've fleshed out your ideas more or you've had a little bit more time to cook and but now you know there there are people that that didn't grow up in that time so all they know are games that have been recycled um, or games you know that there's always been DLC you know it never it never wasn't a thing and games have always been always online and you've always been connected and it's just a different era and that that's the real market you know like I said it's it's the people that literally do not know better they don't they don't know of a different time when it wasn't like that which it is what it is and in other ways it's unfortunate because now we're you know we're gonna miss out on these great experiences that have passion and could have come to be but never will we'll never we'll never see them we'll never we'll never know what they could have been beyond the artwork that we have available or the music and it's unfortunate that things like that are gonna push people with passion out of the industry entirely and I guess you'll just be left with developers that I don't know if developers are really even okay with it I don't a lot of times I think people bash on developers nowadays and blame them for things that happen or the monetization and stuff but a lot of times I don't know I don't I don't know if it's always the developers at fault I think a lot of time I think that there are developers that really want to make something great but become influenced by the people that are overseeing what they're doing and are being pushed to create things and make them a certain way so that they sell to this target audience so I don't I don't always blame developers because you know I mean FromSoft for example we're gonna use FromSoft again because they're a modern developer that has been making good games that um, do feel like passion projects in their own right most of the time even if the ideals can often be recycled um, so you know it's you know you know we don't we don't blame FromSoft for things like that happening you know. and they're even you know like I said um, Need for Speed Unbound as much as people like to talk about it's woke and all that kind of not not wanting to be with the not liking the modern lingo and whatnot um, that's a whole other issue in itself I, I really don't think that need for speed is is that bad if you look at the actual game for what it is and that partly has to do like i said with just criterion um, being a good developer 
and maybe they're not making Burnout games anymore, they're not making Burnout Takedown or Burnout Paradise, but that doesn't mean that, um, that doesn't necessarily make Need for Speed a bad game. And I'm sure that part of the reason that Need for Speed Unbound is the way that it is, is because, you know, these publishers that own them want them to act a certain way. They want them to create things a certain way. Um, you know, there was news that came out recently that the reason that Saints Row 2022 is the way that it is is because can't remember if it was Volition or if it was Deep Silver. Whoever whoever published it um, basically wanted Saints Row to not be so kind of dark and gangster-like. They wanted it to be a little bit more upbeat and and more friendly. And that's why we got the honestly the travesty that is Saints Row 22. It's it's honestly so unfortunate that a game with that high regard and um the the following that it has and the the kind of legacy that it has um to be turned into something that's a laughing stock of what it was before but we now we kind of know that once again that wasn't their fault Or, you know, maybe not entirely their fault. Who knows? Then again, you know, we have three, three, four, three industries, and they've kind of been doing everything wrong lately. So, although I still don't think Halo Four was as bad as everybody says it is, but maybe that's because I didn't have a whole lot of experience with the Halo games prior to it. So, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm probably not. A good reference for something like that. But, um, yeah. Sorry if there's um, weird audio bits or whatnot, or if I'm speaking in weird ways. I don't usually I don't usually speak out on things like this, but I guess I just felt compelled to to talk about it. And like I said, I think the whole scenario speaks to a a, a larger phenomenon than what's going on just with the Alice game. You know, the the whole Alice Asylum being cancelled has to do with a much larger issue than just some difficulties between American McGee and EA. It kind of speaks to the entire industry as a whole. I, I do think that that's true. So... But, um, I don't know. I guess I'm, I'm running out of things to talk about now. I think I've said my piece. I might just clear this room real quick and call it a day. I'll let you guys take what you will. And if you stayed for the whole video, I, I appreciate you. And I hope that... I, I hope that this wasn't... Uh, hard to listen to or unenjoyable and I hope that you enjoyed your stay and if, maybe if, if there's good reception to this maybe I'll talk more about different issues that are going on wouldn't be opposed to that I think it would be, would be kind of fun I definitely got a lot on my mind about issues like this.
talk about esports being not a great part of modern gaming either, if we're going to be honest. It's one of those things where um, it's kind of a gray area. You know, esports aren't inherently bad. They've been around for a long time. There are, there are games that I enjoy a lot as an esport, um, but there's also a part of that where the push for just about everything being an esport is, is not good. And Sorry, I'm smacking. I try not to do that. Um, but you know, the push for everything being an esport isn't isn't a good thing. It's not a good thing. It it breeds a lot of toxicity in a lot of different gaming groups. But that's that's beside the point. That's a topic for another video entirely. That's a whole other rant. This is, this one has gone on for long enough. I assure you. Um, but yeah, so it looks like we hit a checkpoint. I'm going to call it there. But if you enjoyed it, I appreciate you. Thanks for tuning in. I hope that I didn't bore you to death or talk your ear off. I hope you enjoyed your stay. And yeah, I guess I guess that's it. That's where I'm going to call it. I'll see you guys next time.